Welcome back everyone. Today I'll be showing you what all of you have been waiting for. Nicotine from tobacco. I'm using World Strongest Tobacco and it's not the tobacco I'm showing you right here. But this doesn't matter. Besides tobacco, you're also going to need potassium hydroxide. And today's special sauce is going to be MTBE as an extraction solvent. So let's dive right into this. The most important part, which you shouldn't forget, is the stirfish. Commercial tobacco contains up to 4% of nicotine in the leaves. Nicotina rustica, however, contains up to 8%. The dried leaf material even contains up to 16% of nicotine. Using a glass steroid, we forced all of the tobacco into the round bottom flask. While transferring the tobacco, I had a little accident and spilled some of it. If you ever want to have a closer look at homegrown Nicotina Rustica, here's your chance. Then we added 5 up to 10 grams of potassium hydroxide. Nicotine is often bound as some sort of salts, but we need free base nicotine for the steam distillation to be a success. Alkali hydroxides convert nicotine salts to free base nicotine, which can be steam distilled. Nicotine has a boiling point of about 250 degrees Celsius, which is relatively high. With the help of steam distillation, the high boiling yet volatile nicotine is carried over by the water vapor, drastically lowering the required temperature. During a steam distillation, you would normally pass hot steam right through the tobacco. But I'm using an improvised version of steam distillation, in which case we are distilling off the water while simultaneously adding fresh water. Why you ask? Well, I simply don't have the equipment for a proper steam distillation, but this will do the job. Here you can have a look at the entire apparatus. On the left side the addition funnel contains distilled water containing about 5 grams of additional potassium hydroxide. The mixture started to boil quickly but only on one side, the other side was still cool to touch. I had to wait an entire 20 minutes until the first drop finally came over. This contains mainly water with a minuscule amount of nicotine. When the temperature isn't being carefully controlled, the tobacco might end up boiling over into the distillation bridge, contaminating the distillate. As you might know, I'm extremely lazy and I hate waiting for my product to come over. Therefore, a part of the apparatus was wrapped in aluminium foil to speed up the process. When taking a closer look at the distillate, you might be able to see a few drops of oily substance floating on the water. As nicotine is water soluble, these droplets are nicotine. It might however be some sort of oil that's naturally contained in the plant. During the first hour of distillation, it nearly boiled over two times. But afterwards, the foam production magically ceased and I could turn up the heat to speed up the distillation even more. Once enough water was collected, heating and stirring were turned off and the aluminium foil was removed. The nicotine solution was then transferred to a separatory funnel. To extract the nicotine from the water solution, we are going to use ether. My choice of ether falls onto MTBE because it doesn't form peroxides. Laboratorium Discounter has massively helped me out to produce even better videos. They are selling a lot of useful chemicals and if you decide to buy from them, make sure to use my 7% discount code Thylabs to also help out my channel. I rinse the round button flask with ether and this happens. Ether has a high vapor pressure and it propels the stopper out of the flask. Fortunately, it survived the brutal fall onto the ground. The water layer was washed three times using 500 milliliters of MTBE in total. The combined ether layers were then washed one time using saturated sodium chloride solution. This washing step should dry the ether layer even further while also removing some contaminants. Because of the high vapor pressure of ether, it is important to occasionally vent the funnel while shaking it. Once finished, the bottom aqueous layer was drained off and discarded. We don't need this anymore. Before isolating the nicotine from the ether layer, we will have to dry it even further. I'm using molecular sieves and I added them directly to the funnel. The funnel was shaken for a minute before allowing it to stand for a couple of hours to let the molecular sieves do their magic. Now we're getting somewhere. To perform a distillation, we drained all of the ether into a 1 liter round bottom flask. A simple distillation was set up and the ether was quickly distilled off. Ether is really cool because of its low boiling points. The entire distillation was finished in about 20 minutes. For efficiency reasons, I didn't boil off all of the ether during this distillation, 
but I left behind some of it and then transferred everything to a small beaker. Of course, just spoiling off the ether is a huge fire hazard. Therefore, all of this was done in a very well ventilated area. Once the smell of ether had disappeared, I was finished. So we took the beaker off the hot plate and all of the nicotine was transferred to pre-weighed vials. Pure nicotine would be colorless, but because of air exposure, it will always turn yellow. And there you go. In total, we collected 4 grams of nicotine, which is a very bad yield given that we used 120 grams of very strong tobacco. The tobacco leaves were slightly more oldy and one year old and this might have contributed to the low yield. But this doesn't matter, we got enough nicotine to do a few experiments with it. Let's prove that this is actually nicotine. I'm using Dragon Dose reagent and I simply added it to the beaker which still contains some nicotine. Because a lot of precipitate was formed, this means that there's a lot of tertiary amine in there. I wanted to isolate the precipitate. For this reason, I washed it with distilled water and then tried to wash it with acetone because this speeds up the drying process. As it turns out, the precipitate is soluble in acetone, but I didn't want to waste more nicotine just to make more precipitate. I've talked about it before, but today I'm going to show it to you. There are nicotine metal complexes and before I never do them, I'll just do it right now. On the left, a small amount of copper nitrate was added to the test tube and on the right side, we added a small amount of cobalt nitrate. Heavy metal salts are toxic and you shouldn't touch them. A small amount of distilled water was added to dissolve the nitrates and then the solutions were split up between two test tubes. The solutions were split up so we would have some sort of untreated test solution. 0.1 milliliters of nicotine that were isolated from the tobacco were added to the middle test tubes. With the cobalt, some sort of brown complex was being formed. With the copper on the other hand, we got a light blue complex that seems to be insoluble. I gently shook the test tubes and the color of the complexes became even more visible. Here's some nicotine in comparison to pyridine. I wondered what the pyridine complexes looked like and there's only one way to find out. Fortunately, I got a bottle of pyridine from the laboratorium discounter and we are going to use the pyridine to do the same as with the nicotine. Unfortunately, I forgot to press record on the camera, but the middle two test tubes contain the pyridine complexes. The cobalt complex is a little red, but it's not black as the nicotine one, and the copper one is a dark blue. I felt like doing another project with the nicotine, which was to make nicotine benzoate. In order to do this, we only needed to make 0.81 grams of nicotine with 0.61 grams of benzoic acid. I don't recommend smoking or vaping to anyone, but nicotine benzoate is often used in electronic cigarettes. It enters the bloodstream a lot faster than pure nicotine and it's thus deemed to be much more addictive. The nicotine benzoate made in this video should not be consumed under any circumstances. It might be contaminated and besides that, smoking and vaping are bad for your health. Once the ingredients were weighed out, we only had to shake the vial and the nicotine benzoate was finished. And there you go. Today I've shown you how to extract nicotine from tobacco, how to make a few nicotine complexes and how to make nicotine benzoate, which is used in electronic cigarettes. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you soon.